Hello internet, welcome to the channel. My name's Frankie and in today's video we are playing Planet Zoo Console Edition. We're going through career mode and we're moving on to level three, which I believe is all about pandas. We're gonna try and find out what's new in this level as each level so far we have learned something new in tutorial form. So let's go and have a look at what we're gonna learn this time. Ah, oh, pandas. <laughs> But they're my daughter's favorite animal. <laughs> I think it's fair to say that if ever there was an animal which has captured the public's imagination, it's pandas. Oh, well, that's assuming you ignore cats and dogs, obviously. It'll take more than a cute bear to knock them off of the top spot. <laughs> oh, but did you know, thanks to the incredible conservation work that's being done in China and around the world, pandas are no longer endangered. <laughs> Amazing! That said, they're still considered vulnerable. So, this zoo is extraordinarily lucky and honored to be part of that conservation effort. It really speaks to our reputation, a reputation that you're gonna be in charge of maintaining, along with all the uh, general maintaining too. I really can tell you how important the welfare of those pandas is. Oh, wait, I can. <laughs> it is vitally important. The eyes of the world are on you, my friend. Although, <laughs> perhaps more pressingly, the eyes of Nancy are on you, too. <laughs> Welcome to China. This is Bernie's brand new panda celebration zoo. So new, in fact, that it's not quite finished. But we'll deal with that later. First, let's take a tour of the zoo. <laughs> Obviously, the giant pandas are the main attraction for this zoo, and luckily for us, we have one which was born just a few days ago. Let's go and have a look at it. Go on, don't be shy. Select the panda cub. And now, we enter animal camera mode. Oh, doesn't it just warm the cockles of your heart? So cute! Did you know that giant pandas, or Ailaropoda merinaluca, for being formal, are the only entirely herbivorous bears? They can actually eat up to 38 kilos of bamboo a day. <laughs> Not that surprising, given that they'll spend up to 14 hours a day chomping away. I don't imagine this little fluff ball has that kind of appetite yet, though. <laughs> oh, no. I just got word from one of our keepers that a sable antelope was placed into a habitat without going through quarantine first, and that they're displaying signs of disease. We'll have to move them into quarantine to stop the infection from spreading to the other animals. To do that, go to the highlighted habitat, find the infected animal, and then select them to bring up their information panel. So far, things kind of seeming like a bit of a refresher from the last two, but I've got to say, these pandas are really cute. Good. Now choose move and then transfer them into quarantine. I've highlighted the quarantine facility in the zoo for you. Oh, phew. That's a relief. Now that we've stopped the infection from spreading any further, we need to build a vet surgery so the antelope can be treated and then returned to his habitat. I've already highlighted where I'd like you to build it, so why don't we head over there? In order to build the vet surgery, choose Facilities, Staff Facilities, and then Vet Surgeries. Now, I know it's quite a simple task, but I actually quite like the act of placing this veterinary surgery. Um, mainly because it it shows you how you can use a theme and create a running theme throughout your zoos or whatever. Make it all blend together quite nicely. And, you know, it's just another opportunity to mess about with the building tools and stuff. And it shows you that you can place items like an entire building on top of a cluster of rocks, which is pretty unusual because you'd expect to have to make a really solid platform or something, but it's just a little insight into how 
you can do things and what leniencies there are in terms of building for later on in the game. But it is quite nice to see that just like normal with these tutorial based levels, we're starting out nice and easy before getting onto anything too complex. That's the job? Vet surgeries play a very important role in a zoo, as they're the only places that vets can treat the animals. Once there's room for the antelope, the vet will pick them up from quarantine and bring them to the surgery. Mm. Yes, diseases can spread through a habitat quite easily, especially if the water inside it isn't being cleaned regularly. As it happens, I just got a report that one of our water treatment facilities has broken down and the water in the flamingo and saltwater crocodile habitats has gotten dirty. I've highlighted the water treatment facility for you, so you should go and check it out. Select the water treatment facility to bring up its information panel. Good work. Now that the water treatment facility has been repaired, the water will be cleaned up in two shakes of a lamb's tail. <laughs> you can also use mechanics to repair power facilities, transport rides, spins, benches, signs, and, as you already know, habitat barriers. Now, I'll be honest, I'm still a little worried about that disease scare we had, so I think we should do some research into it. Doing research into a disease can help prevent future outbreaks of it. And even if we do have an outbreak, it'll make the disease much less potent. I'd like you to start some research into border telosis. Disease research can be found in vet research, so head over to your research center and get one of the vets researching it. Lovely job. Once that research is complete, I expect we'll send that disease packing in no time. Whew! That was a close-run thing with those antelopes. <laughs> I dread to think what might have happened if you hadn't got them into quarantine as quickly as you did. Fast thinking there. We had a horrible outbreak of viral gastroenteritis here at Goodwin House. Although, luckily, <laughs> that was just limited to me and my wife. Right. Now that we've got all our urgent tasks in hand, we can start to focus on the guests and improving their time in the park. You see, you can also do research into new and improved guest facilities, transport rides, as well as new types of barrier and other things via the workshop. I've highlighted the workshop for you. So head over there, select it, and then choose View Workshop. So far, a lot of what we've been doing is relating to staff and resources and research. I think that's going to be the main way that this level is headed. Which is good, because so far we've mainly been focusing on the animals, and we need to learn how to treat our staff and stuff in this game as well. And finally, assign a mechanic to research souvenir shops. I can't wait to see the next big innovation in zoo merchandise. Great stuff. That research will take a little while, so let's have a look at something else in the meantime. Because we've had some good news! It turns out that we're allowed to adopt more giant pandas. The authorities have given us three females to help with our breeding program. Even so, I'm sure you know how notoriously difficult it is to get pandas to breed, so we'll have to be patient. Our current giant panda habitat is full to the brim, but luckily we've already got another habitat ready to go. But before we move our new pandas in, they'll need to go through quarantine. Of course, we can't do that until we've accepted them. So open up Animal Trading and go into the Animal Reward section. Just choose Transfer to Animal Storage next to each of the pandas and they'll be sent there. Finally, we can send them from Animal Storage to Quarantine. To do that, just select them in Animal Storage, then Send to Zoo. Then choose the zoo's quarantine facility. Don't worry, I've highlighted it for you so you can find it easily. Mm. 
While we wait for them to clear quarantine, you should set up their new habitat so they feel at home in there. I'll also need you to bring over one of the male pandas from our other habitat, but because without him, we're not going to have much of a breeding programme, are we? <laughs> so go on, move him over and get everything set up for your pandas. This task of adopting some pandas and sending them to quarantine before they ever get to their enclosure, I think is a really good task. Because if you were to start up your own zoo without having done this tutorial level, you wouldn't know to send them to quarantine necessarily when you first adopt them. And the issue with that is you could be adopting a bunch of animals that have new diseases that your vets don't actually know how to treat. Because diseases are something that your vets need to research in the research labs. And if you haven't done it already and a new animal comes in with a new disease, it's going to take longer to actually treat that animal. So it is a bit of a risk and it's, that's why it's important that you do quarantine your animals. As the next task is all about modifying this enclosure to meet the needs of the pandas, I'm going to pop this section in time lapse mode. And because that's going to be altering the total playtime of this video, I just want to let those of you that are interested know that it took roughly an hour and 20 minutes to complete this level. So it's, it's nice and simple again. And my favourite thing about decorating this enclosure was the plants. I really like getting to play about with the different types of foliage and stuff. And yeah, I actually quite enjoyed sprucing up this enclosure, getting it ready for the pandas. So enjoy this little time lapse and we'll get back to it in a second. Good news. Our new female pandas have been given a clean bill of health. You'd best move them into the new habitat so they can settle in. And I hope you've made their habitat as comfy as possible, because animals will only breed if they're happy. I just wanted to take a step back here and look at what I'd done before moving on to the next thing. Just wanted to see what the enclosure looked like, and I spied this panda having a good old back scratch on a tree. I just had to get a closer look. Looks, having, looks like he's having a jolly good time. Now, moving the pandas from quarantine to their enclosures, or any animals for that matter, is a pretty straightforward process. You just go to your quarantine zone and you select the animals you wish to move. Normally, you just press select all because it's more likely they're going to be going to the same enclosure than not. And then you go to the enclosure you wish to, wish to place them and select that enclosure and some caretakers and zookeepers Whoever's available, we'll go and grab the boxes and bring them to their enclosure. Oh, bless. I think they'll be really happy in there. Fingers crossed we'll see some lovely new cubs sooner rather than later. Right, while they're being delivered, we'd better get on with something else, eh? Dear me. There's never any time to rest when you're running a zoo, is there? Well, unless you hit pause. Okay, I think it's time I taught you all about work zones. I know, they don't sound as interesting as the animals, but trust me, they're ever so useful. You see, work zones are a way of making sure that your staff concentrate on specific habitats or tasks within the zoo, so they aren't wandering off elsewhere when it's time to feed the animals or the like. So, let's start by creating a new work zone and then assigning a keeper to it so they know to look after the new pandas. To do that, go into the access menu, then zoo management, then head into the staff overview tab and choose work zones. 
Now choose New Work Zone. To set up your new work zone, I'll need you to select the highlighted habitat gate, staff room and keeper hut. Oh, and don't forget to name it something useful. <laughs> Once you're done, just go ahead and exit the work zone creator. Now let's hire a new keeper and assign them to our new work zone. We don't want them getting distracted by other goings on in the zoo. Go on, hire one. Work zones are something that again are going to be really important when it comes to making your own zoos. This will help to streamline how your zoo runs. It will allow you to dictate where your keepers and other staff members are working specifically. For instance, you can allocate a zookeeper to a specific enclosure, meaning it's always ready for the animals. Then select your new keeper to bring up their information panel and go to their employment tab. can assign them to your new work zone from the drop-down menu. There you go. Now your keeper will focus their attention on our new pandas. Oh, and just so you know, all types of staff can be assigned work zones. Just make sure that they have access to all the buildings that they need. Oh, and one last thing. You might find it faster to assign them from the work zone section of the staff overview screen. That'll save you having to chase around selecting your staff one by one. Oh, it sounds like the brand research has been completed. <laughs> you should collect your rewards and you can do that by going back into the mechanic research. Now that we've got our lovely new Just a Memento shop designed, you should build one of them near the zoo's exit. That way the guests won't miss it on their way out and we won't miss out on their money. I reckon I could trim a good 20 minutes off of this playthrough of this level just by knowing where I'm going to place stuff to begin with. I spent so long looking for where to place, for instance, this shop and later some bins and benches. I just really struggled to find areas because I didn't want to fill up a huge empty space like those bits at the back of the zoo, which are clearly there for if you need to build new enclosures. I didn't want to fill that space. So I was looking here to see if any of this building was empty because like the orangutan sanctuary, there were some buildings that they had areas within them for you to place things like exhibits and stuff, which I did. And I was wondering if this zoo would have the same thing. But it didn't seem to. Instead, I ended up just squeezing it in a little space by the toilets at the entrance and just called it a day there. Didn't want to make it too fancy. And just before I move on, I'd like to make the point that Just A Memento is a brilliant name for a souvenir shop. And I had a proper laugh when I played this. I did find that genuinely quite funny. Just the memento. Genius. Oh, those pandas look just adorable. <laughs> I can see why people keep foolishly forgetting that they're wild bears. And good work on that new gift shop branding. Just a memento. <laughs> Very clever. Much better than our old overpriced gifts branding. <laughs> I'm all for truth in advertising, but... It was perhaps a little <laughs> on the nose. Back as promised. Right, I'd like you to increase the number of different species in the zoo. Now, you can find out what species are already in your zoo by going into the zoo section and then into the animals area. And if you're wondering how you're going to fit them all in, then mixed species habitats are a great way to save space and create interesting habitats. Just make sure to check the Zoopedia to find out which species enjoy living together. E.g. don't mix lions with antelopes. Just like the second level of career mode, the primate sanctuary, this task is making us focus on just upping the number of species. This time it's from 15 to 18, which means we just need three new species. 
and that can be either exhibit animals or habitat animals. I'm going to go for a bit of a mix, I think. I think it is quite important to have some exhibit animals. Despite them being smaller and potentially a bit less interesting or appealing to the public, I think they are a really good opportunity to show off a different type of animal in your zoo. And when it came to picking some habitat animals, I went to our animals list in the zoo management pages, and I had a look at what animals we already had in the park, and then I went to their Zoopedia pages to see if they had any animals that they could coexist with in their enclosure, things that they get a bit of a bonus from, from living with them. Uh, after having a brief look, I found out that the sable antelope benefits from having a warthog in its enclosure, and I also decided to get some peacocks as well, or Indian peafowl, just because I think they'd get along with anything, basically. As long as it's not like a crocodile, I'm not going to put it in there. I decided to put it in with the pandas. I thought that would be a good little mix. Quite a placid bird, alongside what seems to be the most chilled out bear in the world. So, it can't go wrong. And when I had placed either of these animals into their habitats, the main thing that I wanted to make sure of was that their welfare was a really good standard. And then when I was happy with the percentage it was at, I would move on to the next animal. Once I was happy with the habitat animals and their welfare, I could go and start looking at our exhibit animal. And I decided to place this near some shops that were up by the top behind the pandas. And I really got to say that I like the themed buildings. I think it's going to make for a really easy experience when it comes to building your own zoo. If you're wanting to learn different parts at different rates, you can start out by building, like focusing on enclosures and stuff, whilst you rely on some themed buildings and whatnot to get a general theme for your park. And then when you've got the hang of building really cool enclosures, you can start looking at buildings and how you modify those yourself. It can, having the themes really allows you to have a bit of I don't know, a bit of a uh, cheat code, I guess. Something to fall back on to say, I'm going to rest with this part. I'm going to take it easy with this aspect whilst I prioritise my creative growth on a different type of, I don't know, different type of design, different aspect of the game. Whatever. Uh, what I put in here was the Amazonian giant centipede. They're pretty easy to keep. You know, just pop them in, pop some rocks in. And with those guys entering the zoo, that was his task done. I'm sure you know by now how to make your animals happy. So you'd best get that sorted before the inspector gets you. Sorry, did I not mention there was an inspector coming? Oh, oh dear. After getting to that species number threshold, it was just time to boost the welfare of everything to 90%. And I'm starting at 88%, which is pretty damn high. But in order to get there... I had been checking my animals as I went, but this exhibit animal, I'm going to need to research in order to unlock its, um, what's it called? The hides and the logs or the heat lamps, uh, all the enrichment items, that's it. All the enrichment items for this guy needs to be unlocked through research. So it's going to take a little bit of time just to get that sorted and then it should go up pretty easily. But until then, I can check the animal list on our animal management page and then I can see if any of the animals on there do have a bit of poor welfare. And I can fix that accordingly, which will hopefully boost that percentage. And whilst it didn't initially look like there were any problem animals, it then started to snow, which is fine, except for the fact that there are a lot of animals in this zoo that are adapted to warm climates, and their enclosures did not yet have heaters in them. So that's something else that you're introduced to, having to place heaters in order to regulate the temperature in these enclosures to make sure the animals stay comfortable at all times. And once the enrichment for the centipedes was available, I was able to obviously fill their tank with various decorations and stuff that made them a bit happier. And I also noticed that the flamingos needed a little bit more enrichment, so I was able to give them some items to boost their welfare as well. And then that meant that that task was nicely tied off and ready to move on. Looks like you've got everything humming away nicely. Well done. Oh, well, it seems that with our new pandas and other species, we've attracted lots and lots of new guests. 
Let's work on making sure those guests are kept happy. That means making sure they have great views of the animals, lots of places to buy food and drink, and, well, lots of places to get rid of food and drink. <laughs> Toilets. You should think carefully about where to put your guest facilities, though. For instance, don't put all of the food shops in the same place. Just look at how the guests are distributed around the park and put your facilities where they'll be needed the most. As long as you remember to pay attention to what the guests are thinking, you'll soon have a handle on what everyone wants. The next task is probably what seems to be the easiest on the surface. It's just placing a bunch of buildings or decorations, and it is fairly easy. It's really easy to do. Just place this stuff wherever. However, I was annoyingly quite anal about it and wanted to place them in areas that I thought looked good and the bins in particular frustrated the hell out of me because there were bins everywhere and wherever I placed it it just didn't look right it's like we didn't need one there but you know I just had to go ahead with it anyway and something else when I was placing the chief beef and the uh, cosmic cow milkshakes I screwed up a few times, whether it be that the buildings were placed a little bit too low, causing the path to slope, or just not connecting it to the facade that I'd put down. There was a big learning curve there, which is really good. It's something that, like, learning it here means that when it comes to building my own zoo later, it's going to be a bit more streamlined. I'm just glad to have this space to work things like that out. It really helps. <laughs> expect you to pass with flying colors anything less and i might have to organize a little job exchange scheme for you with whoever's mucking out the pandas now this task of receiving a overall star rating of 2.5 from our inspector is quite an annoying one because she takes ages to get around the zoo even if you fast forward it i'm fairly confident that what you've done up till this point will ensure you get 2.5 stars because you've had to ensure that all of your animals have a welfare rating of 90% at a minimum. And that's going to be really attractive to an inspector. Of course it is. So what can you really do except just sit back and wait, annoyingly. So yeah, that's kind of all I did for the rest of this. Just sat around and waited until the inspection was done. However, whilst I was watching this lady walk around the zoo, I did get a chance to play about with the camera, which is pretty cool. There were loads of filters and stuff you can apply. I'm not entirely sure if I'll ever use them or what the use would be for me using them, but it's good to know they're there, I guess. And then I took the opportunity to go and look at some of the animals in the zoo that I haven't actually had a look at yet, such as the Baird's Taper. I think it's Baird. Is it Baird? I can't remember. This Tapir. Yeah, got to have a look at these. Uh, I love Tapirs. I think they're so cool. I just that they feel proper ice age more than pretty much any other animal i think maybe the sega as well the antelope um they're just such weird creatures i think anything that isn't an elephant but has a trunk just feels a very ice age so yeah it's pretty cool to see these guys swimming about and whatnot and then i hopped over and had a little look at the red pandas as well just taking the time to look at some cute animals in the zoo because I'm not really doing anything whilst that woman just walks about. Another thing that waiting about for the inspector did was it allowed my vets to finish their research on a centipede, meaning that I could get its enrichment full, get all of the rocks and twigs and stuff in there to make the enclosure look the best that it could. I also added a facade to the back. I made it look all uh, jungly, which is pretty cool. I think that adds to the immersion for a visitor. Um, yeah. Still just more hovering about looking at stuff until she's finished. 
So we may as well wrap up here because this is the final task and it, it does get completed. So that's fine. Um, I would just like to thank everybody for having watched, especially if you've watched this far. Maybe give the video a thumbs up so that more people like you can see it. It helps to find the audience that it's intended for if there's a higher rate of engagement, I guess. Uh, also, leave a comment on what you'd like to see in the future and potentially subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this. I have started my franchise zoo. I had started one, but I decided that this that smaller zoo would be used for breeding and such to get some credits so that I could start with an, like, a proper nice zoo for YouTube. And that's what I'm doing. I'm creating Little India or Little Asia, I called it originally. Um, I didn't intend to have only Asian animals in it, but that is the way it's ended up happening. I made my list and it ended up being about 80% Asian animals. And I just thought, why don't we just get rid of those last few and replace them with a couple more Asian animals so that we can have a theme. I think that will help going for my first franchise zoo to allow myself to follow a theme. So that's what we're doing. And the first episode is going to be about red pandas. It's going to be building their enclosure. Not focusing on much else, just the enclosure for now. That's what the video is going to be. Make sure to watch the channel for that. Thank you for watching. And until next time, I'll see you later.